Welcome to Blueprint School. This is a series where we learn about Blueprint related topics. The episodes are divided into four parts. Part one, we go through the topic and learn it. The second part, we go through some uses of what we've learned in some practical examples. Third part is the quiz part. Here I will present a small exam of questions that will test your knowledge on the topic we have learned. Fourth and final part, we go through the answers of the quiz with explanations if needed. If you like the episode, please leave a like and share it with others. If you have a suggestion for a topic for the series, make sure to leave it below. If you think I got something wrong in the episode or you have a tip related to the topic, please do share it in the comments so that I can improve the series. Let's start learning. Today's lesson is in regards to variables. A variable is in essence sort of a container in which you can store a value. Depending on the type of variable, you can store different types of values in your variable. Each variable in Unreal Engine has a corresponding color to easily distinguish what that type is. I have used the same color scheme for the names of the variables in the following slides, so it will be easy to pick up. Boolean. First out, we have booleans. Booleans can have one out of two values, either true or false. This type is good to use for anything where you need to keep track of a yes or no answer to a question, like if an object is moving, true or false. You can see the true or false result as one or zero, one being true and zero being false, on or off. But that is not entirely true. It is more accurate to say that False is the absence of a value, and true is any type of value. I will show this in the demonstration portion later on. An integer is a whole value. The integer variable can hold a value of approximately 2.1 billion as either negative or positive. Integers are useful for things that can't be fractional values, so number of items in an inventory, how many bullets left in a pistol clip, and such things. Integer 64 allows for a larger range of values than normal integer at the cost of space that the variable will take up. You can see the range on the screen, it is very large, so if you don't need that level of range for the bullets left in your pistol clip, you're going to be better off just using a normal integer. The use cases are the same in theory, at least. Float. A float is a decimal value, a fraction. A float is very useful for anything where a whole number is not precise enough to keep track of something, like an amount of time or percentage value or the length of an object, for example. A byte is usually used either in a type called enumerator or for storing very small numbers in or doing more advanced things like storing multiple small values inside of a byte, which can be retrieved later with a bit mask. Text is an alphanumerical group, meaning it can contain both characters and numbers, and is the variable type that you want to make use of when you want to localize your game. So any type that is displayed to the player that you may want to show in different languages, like English, Spanish, German, then this is the variable type you want to make use of. Name is also an alphanumerical grouping, and this one is case insensitive, meaning it doesn't matter if you have your characters written in lowercase or uppercase, it will be seen as the same. Unreal Engine uses name as identifiers for certain fields. One example of this is key fields for a data table. String is the alphanumerical group that you can use when you don't make use of text or name. The benefit of strings is that it is easy to manipulate with functions like concatenation and splits and allows you to alter the string based on your needs. A vector is a group of three float values. It can be used for things like an object's position in 3D space. Then each float value represents its position along one of the axes in a three-dimensional space. It can also be used to represent, for example, color through red, green, and blue channel values. A rotator is also a grouping of three float values, but in this case it represents an object's rotation in 3D space. Each float value still represents one axis, like a vector, but for rotation instead of location in that case. 
A transform variable is a complete set of positional information for an object in 3D space. A transform variable is a combination of three different groupings, each grouping consisting of three float values. The first grouping of float values is the position, because the first group is a vector variable. The second group is the rotation, so it has a rotator variable. The last group is a group of three floats that represent the scale of an object. It is the multipliers along each axis to determine the size of an object. A scale of 10 makes an object 10 times larger along that axis. Lastly, we will talk about an object reference. So an object reference variable is a variable that will point to a specific game object. The reason and purpose to have one of these is to be able to find or interact with that object. Examples would be to read or write information on that specific object. When you're in the blueprint and you want to create a variable, you go over here to the variable section and you click the plus sign and then you get a variable. You get to choose a name, so you can name it whatever you want to. And then you choose a type. You can choose either a type over here or you can choose a type over here on the details, uh, whichever you prefer. And then you have created a variable. In this case, I have created one variable named after the type that it is. So I have one for all of the ones that we have gone through in the episode so far. As you can see, all of them are color coordinated here and they have their color coordinated through both their get and their set methods. So uh, to go through that quickly, this is a get method. This is a set method. This one reads from the value that you have currently in the variable. This one sets a value to the variable. To get a getter, you can either drag it out into the blueprint and then drop it, and then you can choose a get or a set. Or you can hold down your control key, drag it out, drop it, and it will automatically be a getter. If you hold down alt key and do the same, it will be a setter instead. Each of these you can see will have a value you can put in. Either you can hook up a variable to it and have the value designed or designated that way, or you can just set the value directly in the setter. So you can see you can have integers and numerical values in the integers. You can have also in the bytes, you can have fractional values in the set for the floats and the text ones, you can see you have different forms of text you can put in. When it comes to the vector, we have three values, as we talked about earlier. There are floats, so you can have one for x, y, and z. Same for a rotator, which will have a x, y, and z, uh, except for a transform. A transform, when you look at it normally, it looks like this as a setter. But if you right click on it and say split struct, then you get what I have currently to the left, which is essentially saying we have a vector for our transform, uh, meaning our location in the world, uh, sorry, our transform location in our world. Uh, we have one for the rotation, which is a rotator, and we have a vector for our scale in the world, which we talked about earlier as well. Then you also have the object where you can have a uh, object set as you want to set the value, or you can have it as cleared or none, which means it will look like this and it will set it to a null value or an uh, empty value, essentially. So these are the different uh, variable types that we have available in this case. And now we will be looking a little bit at how you can um, make use of these and convert them a little bit and see some demonstrations for them. First up, we have a demonstration of Boolean here. So if we hook it up like so, whatever value we have in the Boolean here will be set in here as the value of our print. You can see this little um, conversion that's happening here. This happens if you drag something to another type, like in this instance, we have a Boolean that's being dragged into a string. That means it needs to somehow convert or translate that. And <clears throat> our Boolean has the ability to have a true or false. And a string is just a uh, alphanumeric grouping of characters. So if we have something like this and we were to start now and we press E, you can see in the top left corner there, it says false. And that is because the, the print string here, it took the value which was false here, made it into a string, a grouping of characters, and then printed that out. Now we can also do the same for integers and make conversions. 
So if we have an integer over here, we say that we want to have a value like five and we then convert it to a boolean and then we convert it to a string. What will happen is it will go from five and then it will say it is true and we will print out the true. The reason why it's printing out true is because a boolean is of course a false value for a non-value and true for any other kind of value. So what's a non-value? Well, when it comes to an integer, a uh, zero would be considered not a value. So if we have zero and we print, you can see that it says false now. So zero would be false and anything else would be true in this case. Moving on, we can also do the same for integers. We can have an integer like zero or 42, and we can just immediately convert that into a string and then print it out and seeing here, Going from string to string, we don't need a conversion. So you can see it prints out 42. So that's how a conversion from integer to string works. When it comes to floats, these are not whole numbers anymore. These are decimal or fractional values. We can convert them to integers like integer, like we have down here, or an integer 64. And the result is essentially the same. If we have a value here that we say is going to be 9.2, and we save and we run this, we play. You can see that the value it gets is nine. And the reason for that is of course, because a integer can only have a whole value while a float does not contain a whole value. So what happens is it cuts off the decimal values in that case. It looks like a normal conversion here if you go from float to integer 64, but it's a little bit more clear what's happening if you go from a float to a normal integer, because then we, as a default, if we're trying to translate or convert, we get a truncate, which essentially just means that we're cutting off uh, parts of the, the end of the value. Last up, we have the name. Name is used as identifiers. We can convert this to strings just fine. In this case, we have a name which is A uppercase, B lowercase, C uppercase. And if we send that in here and we play and we type it out, you can see that it's translated as A uppercase, B lowercase, C uppercase. You might be thinking, well, I said that this was case insensitive earlier. Why is it sending out the correct value of what we actually had over here? That's because you still have a in ABC, the name here is still consisting of ABC like I've written here. It's just that uh, it gets fully sent over to the string, but if we were to make a comparison for this against something else, it would consider it the same. So to demonstrate this, we have over here another example. We have name here, which is again going to be A uppercase, B lowercase, C uppercase. And string in this case is just gonna be full uppercase ABC. Now these are of course different, but if we press the button in here, you can see that it says the same, which is the print string that happens when it considers everything to be equal here. So when it comes to comparisons, it is case insensitive. And that is the end of this little obstacle course of small tests of how you can make use of variables and convert between them. Hopefully this makes sense. Let's move over to the quiz part. We have now reached the quiz part of this episode. On the screen now you will see a bunch of different questions related to what we have gone through in this episode. So make sure to pause here and then type down or write down all your different answers. And when you are ready, proceed with the video to get the answers for these questions. Question one. The answer is true. The reason for this is a boolean will always consider a blank or a lack of value as false and anything else as true. So even though minus one is a negative value, it will still be seen as a value and will return true. Question two. The answer is integer. Even though we could technically use multiple different variables for this, integer is the one that makes most sense. The integer 64, for example, it is a range that is way higher than we would likely want to have in a clip. So it doesn't make sense to make use of all that space that the variable needs. So integer is a better suit for this specific case. 
And since bullets are something that you can either have a whole one, you can't have half of bullets, then we have an integer instead of something like a float. Question three. Name, text, and string are the names. Question four. The answer is text. Text is the alphanumerical grouping that we need to make use of if we want to be able to localize it to different languages. Question five. The answer is vector or transform. Both of these variable types can hold positional information in it. Question number six. The answer is float. A rotator consists of three floats. Question number seven. The value that we get is seven. The reason for this is that we can't store decimal values in an integer, so we will lose that fraction. And when it comes to converting from a float to an integer, a truncation is being done, which means it's essentially just dropping the variables. So no rounding up until eight, for example, is possible. You just lose the fraction of the value. That is all for now on this episode. If you liked it or have any other feedback on the episode, make sure to leave it in the comments below. And if you really liked the episode, make sure to share it to others so they can enjoy it as well. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.